Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we're going to do the following theorem. Now the theorem says that if the opposite sides of a quadrilateral is equal, then it is a parallelogram. Now remember I told you that if I give you a quadrilateral, you have to prove that it is a parallelogram by proving one of its, one of its properties. So you could prove that the opposite sides are parallel, the diagonals bisect, the opposite angles are equal, one side is parallel and equal. Now why didn't I choose this specific one? Because if they give us a certain quality and they tell us it's a parallelogram but they want us to prove that it's true, then that quality we can't use. So we need to find other another quality. So we can try and prove that it's parallel or the diagonals bisect. So basically we can use any other quality but we can't use that one quality. Okay, so we're going to use what they gave us. They gave us that the opposite sides are equal. And then we're going to use that information to prove any of the other ones. Alright, so what are they telling us? They're telling us that we have a quadrilateral and they are telling us that the opposite sides are equal. Now what can we do to prove any other quality? Now the most convenient quality would be to prove that the opposite sides are parallel. If you look in triangle, H I J and then we're looking at triangle J K H we have that H I is equal to K J why because it was given to us this was given information then we've got that I J is equal to H K also, this was given because they said the opposite sides are equal. Then we have that HJ is equal to HJ. Why? This is common. Now, from your rules of congruency, what we had just proved is that the two triangles are congruent to each other. That is the reason you need to be sure that you know your congruency and its rules. It's side, side, side. Remember there were four rules. If you're not familiar with the four rules, go back to your revision for grade 9. Look under congruency where we discuss the four rules. Now we know that they're congruent and as soon as they are congruent, we know the triangles are exactly the same, which means now that the opposite angles to the sides are equal. So if we look at side IJ and side HK, they are linked to the following angles, which means that those angles are equal. That is the deductions you get from a congruency. When you do a congruency, then you know, okay, I proved the congruent, so the three sides and the three angles must equal. Now you've already got the three sides, now we're proving the angles. So H2 is going to equal to J1. The next angle, let's link it to this side. What side is opposite these angles? HI is with J2 and KJ is with H1. So I know that J2 is going to equal to H1. Now if you look at the drawing, we have that H2 is equal to J1. That is a deduction from our congruency. As soon as you prove congruency, you can start saying, oh, so the angles are equal. Then we have that H1 is equal to J2. Now look at what is happening. If you take here, what can you tell me about J2 and H1? J2 and H1 are forming alternate angles. Can you see the Z? Therefore, KH is parallel to IJ. And then, if you look at the H2 and the J1, look at what they said, what they doing. Can you see it's also forming a Z? It's also forming a Z. So we have that H2 and J1 
are also forming alternate angles. Therefore, HI is parallel to KJ. But now look, in order for something to be a parallelogram, one of the rules are that the opposite sides are parallel. And as soon as you know the opposite sides are parallel, you know that it is a parallelogram. So, now that we have that the opposite sides are parallel, we can say, okay, so the opposite sides are parallel, therefore, this quadrilateral H, I, J, K is a parallelogram. Can you see, we didn't use the quality of a parallelogram as in opposite sides are equal because that was given. So you can't use the quality that's given to prove, uh, to, to make a conclusion. You have to use any other quality of the parallelogram. Thank you for watching.